I never would have thought in a million years when I was 300 pounds and first started really lifting weights and focusing on it, that probiotics would have played a role in how much muscle I built. Now, here I am today, 10 years later, looking at this, realizing the effect of the microbiome and the signaling process, but also the absorption of nutrients process and the anabolic signal. My mind is blown. Let me open with just like a very broad study that just paints such a clear picture. Published in the journal Translational Medicine, took a look at what are called germ-free mice. Germ-free mice don't have bacteria. They get rid of the bacteria, so totally germ-free. Okay, they found that with these germ-free mice, they had significantly reduced muscle quality. Okay, a lot of atrophy occurring, less gene expression involved with muscle growth. Uh, they had less IGF-1, less growth hormone, things like that. The muscle is just poor quality and it was wasting away. Like, what's going on? They don't have the gut bacteria, so clearly there's a link here. So what they did is they took bacteria from other mice, normal mice, implanted it into the germ-free mice, and suddenly atrophy stopped, muscle improved, and they started getting the gene expression again of like all these pro-growth signals within their muscle. What the heck's going on? So then they investigate a little bit further with other studies on performance and adding probiotics in. They find, hmm, probiotics are actually affecting performance in a positive way. But this video isn't necessarily about like just taking probiotics. It's about how the diversity of our microbiome and specific strains can have an effect, and also a little bit of probiotics. But that was a mouse study. Let's take a look at a human clinical study that was pretty cut and dry. This one was published in the International Society of Sports Nutrition, and it gave a very popular probiotic used in the research world called BC30, okay? Gave this to subjects and it found that their vertical power, jump power improved, their peak power improved, and of course their fat mass improved as well, which could have been secondary from the fact that they were more active and able to move better, and maybe they were just recruiting more uh, lipids, right? They were oxidizing more fat because they were moving better. Anyhow, I digress. But now check out this really interesting science, because now we're starting to look at, okay, the implementation of certain bacteria's diversity of a gut microbiome can actually affect how we utilize nutrients. Because this is the big piece. If we want to build muscle, it's all about being able to harness the power of a couple really specific amino acids. One in particular called leucine. I've talked about this many times. Leucine signals what is called mTOR. If I could explain this in a way that is super simple, mTOR is like a switch that your body flips to put into muscle building mode. When mTOR is not activated, it is very difficult to build muscle. So mTOR is stimulated by one specific amino acid called leucine. Anyhow, I digress, but that's important to know. So there's a study that was published in the journal Probiotics and Antimicrobial Proteins. It looked at that same BC30 that we've talked about and its effect on gut inflammation and basically gut wall function, which sounds totally unexciting. But when you realize that that plays a huge role in what we absorb, it gets a little bit more exciting. So they found that when BC30 was administered, it improved the function of the villi. Those are the little finger-like things in your intestines that absorb nutrients. And secondarily, they found that the absorption of leucine was enhanced and the absorption of citrulline was enhanced. Why are these two aminos so important? Okay, well, leucine, when we have absorbed more leucine, we get a stronger mTOR spike, sending a stronger signal to potentially build muscle. But citrulline is what is called a satellite cell activator. So when you're building muscle, you have satellite cells that sort of hover over your existing muscle cells. And when they get activated, they fuse to the existing muscle, making the muscle bigger. It's those satellite cells that allow the quote unquote adaptation of a muscle getting larger. And citrulline is an activator of those satellite cells. So when we enhance the absorption of leucine, we get a bigger mTOR spike. And when we enhance the absorption of citrulline, we get better satellite activation. So growth plus satellite activation equals, well, an actually pro-growth signal that is isolated to where we want it. This doesn't mean that you can magically take a probiotic and it's going to do this, but the research is starting to indicate that the more diverse the microbiome, the better the signaling is. The better the signaling is, the better the overall look, signal to build muscle can be and ultimately better potential nutrient absorption. I do take a probiotic. The one that I recommend is down below. It's called Seed. It's probably the only probiotic I would recommend right now. There's they come and go off the market, but a lot of times the good ones end up not sticking around just because, I don't know, they're usually not marketers, they're usually just good products. Anyhow, so Seed is down below, and I've connected with them and I've been able to get anyone that watches my videos a discount, so you use the code THOMAS15 and save 15% off. So that link is down below in the description. They're also a supporter of this channel, so thank you Seed for the continued support, but they're also paving the way with a lot of research on the microbiome and very specific things like this, like we're talking about. So it interests me and I'm fascinated by what they're doing. So that link is down below. Again, Thomas 15 saves you 15%.
Okay, now let's move into another study. This study talks about protein absorption. Now it's talking about a protein that I'm not the biggest fan of. Okay, casein protein, but let's just put that aside, put my own opinions aside for a second. Casein protein, I just don't like what it does in just in other areas, but it's still a protein. So this study took a look at 20 grams of casein protein versus subjects consuming 20 grams of casein protein alongside, you guessed it, BC30, a probiotic. Well, guess what? huge changes in recovery. So they found the group that took the probiotic plus the casein protein had significant improvements in recovery 24 to 72 hours after a workout and dramatically reduced muscle soreness compared to the control group. Now they weren't able to measure specific muscle protein synthesis and candidly you're probably not going to get a high amount of muscle protein synthesis from casein because it's such a slow digesting protein. But the fact of the matter is, it's very intriguing to see that recovery was better and soreness was much less showing, hey, maybe it has something to do with, once again, that leucine and that citrulline, but overall just better nutrient availability altogether. Again, that's all hypothetical based on what I'm pulling from this data. But then we look at other things where we say, okay, what about performance? Because performance can equate to muscle building, right? If you can lift harder, if you can expose yourself to more uh, lactate and actually feel that burn more, you actually can signal muscle growth. And yes, believe it or not, it's not just about how much you lift, it's about how much chemical exposure, if you want to call it that, you, you have with your muscles. Okay, that burn that you feel, that lactate, that sends signals to actually trigger growth. That's why things like BFR training or occlusion training, where you actually trap lactate a little bit more, can signal such strong growth hormone responses and such strong muscle growth signals to begin with. I digress, but this study took a look at marathoners and it found that they had a specific strain of bacteria called Velonella, which I've talked about in a couple other videos, that was elevated after a run. Well, that's wild enough saying, okay, well, exercise is increasing this one strain of bacteria, but it continues on. When they isolated this Velonella bacteria and they injected it into mice, the mice became really good runners. Uh, this sounds like something out of like a sci-fi movie, but it's real, right? So we've got runners that have this one particular bacteria that is there because they're running and they're good runners. We take that bacteria and suddenly the mice become good runners. That's unbelievable. Well, what researchers figured out is that that Villanella is involved in lactate metabolism. So lactate, runners deal with all the time. I used to be a runner, so I remember like that, that burn, you just run through it, that burn sucked. But that burn was lactate, right? We call it lactic acid, but it's really just lactate, that lactate response. Well, this Villanella feeds on the lactate and actually assists in the metabolization of it. So what are we left with? we're left with a bacteria that actually allows you to have a potentially higher lactate threshold, which means you can withstand the pain in the weight room a little bit more because you have this bacteria. So it's not like you could just magically take that bacteria, but the point is if you do the things to support that bacteria and you support a good, natural, healthy, diverse microbiome with good amounts of soluble fiber, chia, flax, of course the proteins that you need already, and everything you can do to protect your microbiome, avoid the emulsifiers, avoid the artificial sweeteners, and yada yada, you can potentially improve your muscle growth signaling. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.